Good morning. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, great. Good morning. <laughs> how you doing? I'm James. Good, James. How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, thank you. Ah, uh, this is beautiful. You cut us uh, right in the middle of it. <laughs> what What are we in the middle of? Just break Planting it down. Watermelon. See, on the tra that's on the trailer. And we, that's what's out there right now. Oh. The little green guy sticking up. Yeah, yeah. Started. Yep. Wow. Those are the transplants. Some of some of it is cantaloupe. The other watermelons up here in the front. The different varieties out there. Hmm. But uh, yeah. So I sit on someone put you to work. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna get it right that that orange thing. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Whoa. Tell me your name and um, tell me what you do. Uh, Donald Sherman, uh, owner of Sherman Produce Market, and, and farmer, vegetable farmer mostly. Okay. But, uh, there, there's other things that I dabble into, a little bit of tree fruit too. So. Nice. But primarily a vegetable farmer. And how long have you been a vegetable farmer? Um, on my own for about 30 years, uh, but I was born into it. My brothers uh, uh, farmed, you know, when I was young, and uh, so it's always been a family thing. Uh, family originally from Louisiana and they migrated uh, out here to California in their early 50s and uh, to the San Joaquin Valley in the later 50s, mid 50s and uh, the family has been involved in farming ever since. Okay, and uh, what's your favorite vegetable? everything that I grew in and all of it's good you know so um, and I you know from season to season you know one thing it, it changes you know so I, I, I love it all um, you know summertime comes around watermelon is probably the favorite uh, winter time comes around all of the greens you know because that's what's in season you know so we've always uh, family has always have eaten you know we eat that way so okay yeah. And so right now, um, tell me a little bit about like your farm and like where we're at right now. This is uh, primarily um, leased farm ground. Uh, and I have uh, three different locations where I'm at right now. Uh, actually four now. Um, and uh, uh, so that is one of the challenges trying to be able to find farm farmland to purchase so in the meantime this is you know kind of what you have to do and you know find some ground that you can lease to be able to you know apply your trap your craft so, okay and how long is your lease uh the lease here is like uh four years and we're in the second year of it um you know, and there might be a possibility we could renew, but I'm I'm currently trying to look at trying to purchase okay. if I can find the right size piece. Trying to stay in the Central Valley? Yes. Yes. That's at least that's that's the plan, you know, but if uh, something else, you know, that knocks us down, you know, and uh, a real good opportunity, I mean it's you know, I can farm, I don't care where I'm at. <laughs> you know, I adjusted the climate, uh the practices, uh, you know, you can adjust. So it, uh, it really doesn't matter, you know, that much uh, outside of the travel, you know, because of where I'm, where I'm situated at, you know. Okay, great. And so what do you like about farming here, um, particularly in this space? Uh, well, the climate is, is, is nice, um, you know, and it's something that I'm used to. Uh, although, you know, you, every year is different, you know, sure. but, but it's still uh, able to almost anything that you could that you can eat here you know at some time or another outside of bananas and, and pineapples and that kind of stuff uh, you know here in the valley you know you can just about grow anything you know cherries strawberries you know any type of cabbage broccoli all that stuff can be raised here okay and so what are you gearing up for right now can you tell us about this is the spring summer plant time this is uh, 
all of your squashes, um, watermelons, tomatoes, cantaloupes, uh, you know, okra, peas. This is this is the time for your for your summer things to go in. Green beans, okay, you know, all those type of things. Nice, nice. Um, shoot, and so can you tell us about the watermelons out here right now? Well, there are. We're just now starting to plant. They uh, they just came out of the greenhouse, um, and uh, like I said, it's 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 plant time now. You know the temperatures have kind of uh, settled in to uh, to be able to plant. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we still had some really cold morning temperatures. Yeah. So you know we had to we had to wait. You know. So now it seems like the overnight temperatures are in the uh, upper 40s and into the 50s, which keeps them right. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so how was the rainy season with you this year? Uh, good and bad, you know, uh, it delayed uh, being able to prepare the soil uh, by, you know, like a month. But, uh, but overall, the, uh, the availability of water and being able to recharge the underground system is, I mean, you know, that's, that's a godsend, you know, because here in the valley, I mean, no, no water, no farm, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, so it's great. And, and especially for me, you know, because primarily I'm dealing with uh, pumping water, you know, so with, uh, with all of the rain, some of the surrounding farmers are able to use ditch water. So it stops them from pumping underground, which some, in, in some instances, if that's your only source of irrigation, you know, that, hey, that's gonna relax things a little bit so you don't have to worry about your well going dry so much, you know, because other farmers are able to use some of the water that we've accumulated, so. Tight. You would call yourself a good farmer? I would call myself an excellent farmer. Okay. And, and, and what are some of the qualities that make you particularly an excellent farmer? It's the love of farming. It's in my blood. Um, it's something that uh, I've been doing since I can remember, you know, with my brothers. It was always fun uh, going out with them. I didn't even realize it was work, really, at first, you know, because it was just being out there with my older brothers. And uh, and after, you know, coming up working for other people, then we start actually doing things ourselves. Uh, oh yeah, it's, uh, you know, and it's also the aspect of being able to do something that's wholesome, to be able to sell to people that don't get that type of thing. Yeah. So that that's that's really what, uh, it's, it's a lot of different things. I think it's the love. And so you said it was your older brothers that you started. Yes. So what's like a one of your favorite memories from working with food and farming and realizing like something that you still cherish today? Oh, you know, I think being out on the farm, you know, with us, you know, working, sweating and you know, all of us breaking and having lunch together, eating together, and then being able to uh, ride along with my brothers to the markets and to be able to see how much the people were enjoying getting fresh, fresh things, you know, and uh, being able to connect with the farmer, you know, being able to see all of those things really, you know, that stuff's ingrained in you, you know, so it's, uh, like I said, it's a multifaceted thing, you know, that goes into the love of doing it. And when you, and so when your family moved out here and they came straight to the valley? Yes. Okay, and they knew that they were gonna farm? Yeah, my mother uh, was actually instrumental in, in buying the property. They uh, they landed in Martinez, California. Yeah. And she started looking around for places to, 
you know, to buy. She didn't want to stay in the city, so, uh, and she bought our, our land here in uh, Ballard, California. And uh, as soon as we, you know, as soon as they got here, I wasn't even born yet, but uh, as soon as we moved here, my, my dad built our house. What year was this? Uh, I want to say 50, maybe 52, 53, yeah. right around in there. So, you know, he, he built a house. Uh, he was a uh, union carpenter, and he did quite a, quite a bit of work right there in the Richmond and in the Bay Area. You know, that was a, that was a thing then, and he used to commute back and forth working, uh, working there. But, uh, but he also did some farming back in, in Louisiana, too, and kind of, and, and my mother was a uh, master gardener. Mm. So she she was really one of the ones who really pushed the uh, the farming aspects with our brothers, and, and they just kind of took on to it. And uh, hey, even even went to college, you know, uh, Fresno State, San Luis Obispo. A couple of brothers graduated there uh, in in ag. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Stockton. Oh yeah. So um, I'll say this is amazing to me because. Born in Sacramento, moved to Stockton, up and down I-5 my whole life, and never pulled off on the side of the road thinking that I had access to someone's farmland, you know, or yes. knowing that yeah. there were black farmers, like, here in California. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. what has, what's, like, the legacy that you're holding being a black farmer in California? You know, I... <sighs> Until here recently, the last few years, I didn't realize exactly um, how unique of a thing it was, you know, because I'm just doing what's natural to me. But uh, looking around and realizing that there just just weren't that many of our people farming, and uh, you know, and I think what what I'm going to try and do is try to recruit. You know, even outside my family, my son is starting to take an interest and he's been coming out, you know, learning how to operate all the equipment and understanding why we do what, where, you know, but uh, he, he's starting to really take an interest in it, which is something I'm happy about, but uh, it has to go beyond that, you know, uh, working with some youth groups and stuff, trying to see if I can just find one out of five, even, you know, that that's going to take an interest in it to be able to give them give them some knowledge, you know, and encourage them to get out and, and, and keep things going. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, that, that's a lot right there. Um, so what are some, what are some misconceptions about farming? Well, um, some of the, I, I think, you know, when, when they, when they look at it, uh, as if uh, some of the old things about, you know, that is just this back breaking stuff and, uh, you know, uh, working hard and not getting paid, and, you know, just it's, it's not like that, you know, um, when you are uh, in charge and uh, it's just like any other business, you know, uh, you know, there's money to be made. Uh, there's satisfaction from, from doing it. Uh, and, uh, hey, you know, it's just like any other industry. You know, you you got to learn and figure out uh, uh, how to be able to make money, how to take shortcuts. It's just like anything else. And, uh, you know, you don't, uh, uh, the technology has changed so much. Uh, a lot of times you're working, you're inside the cab of a tractor with air conditioning shade you know uh lights uh the ability to be able to work early and not be out in the middle of all of that um you know people you know they need to know you know some of the youngsters who, who think about trying to get into it it's not you know it's not yeah. like that you know tell me about a typical day i mean we, you could start even currently like what's your typical day been like this week uh up early uh hooking up equipment picking up plants you know, early in the morning. What time you wake up? Uh, usually five, five in the morning, you know, and it's five in the morning, cup of coffee, little stuff to eat, out. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, depending on 
uh, how much you're trying to get done, you know, you could be done by 10 o'clock and then pick it up again the next day, depending on the environment, you know, what, what the temperatures are like. But, you know, if you need to take a break in the afternoon, take a break for a couple hours. But that might mean that I work until 8 o'clock until it's dark. Uh-huh. So you're able to uh, to adjust what you do, you know. So, yeah. And uh, what kind of team do you have? Um, I have, uh, of course, me, my son, and uh, uh, a couple of people, a couple, couple of hands that uh, that are around me most of the time to help me do things, but a lot of seasonal uh, help, you know, with uh, area area farm workers, you know. Uh, on the weekends and afternoons, or if I really have something uh, that needs to be done right now, it's usually a lot of piecework. You know? But uh, I think in the next couple of years, uh, it will be, uh, we'll develop into having two to three time full time workers, uh, which is, you know, why we're trying to find land to expand, you know, all the way out to be able to be able to support all of that. So, um, tell me about tell me about your vision again. Starting off, okay, amount of land and what you do with it. Yeah, I, I would love to be able to be out on uh, about a hundred acres of land uh, and, and have it uh, split between fruit trees and uh, you know table grapes and, and vegetables. Um, but also along with that, I would like to see uh, the development of a black market. You know grocery store or market that featured uh, a lot of produce that uh, black farmers produce. Um, there's not a black market in the Fresno area, and uh, but not only here, all up and down California, you know, uh, LA, Bay Area, um, you know, because I think there's enough, uh, there's enough farmers that produce a, a variety of things that uh, we, can, we can actually stock a store you know, with year round. So I would love to be able to see that. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm always having conversations with different people about that, different uh, business people, you know, about possibly and trying to see how that could be done, you know. And even if it, you know, the the 100 acres didn't come until after that happened, that would still be something, you know, for for us to accomplish stuff. And, And what better place than the Central Valley? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to start. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really. I would really like to see that. You know, uh, in my lifetime. You know, before I. You know, before I'm gone, it would be would be great to be able to see that. You know, there used to be um, black-owned markets uh, back in the uh, early '60s, early '70s, and they just disappeared. So. Um, now I think we really need to, as a people, we really do need to get back to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever just drive by, like, dialysis centers and just throw vegetables at people? <laughs> you know, like, tell me about, like, the health benefits of kind of the work you do and, like, the amount of vegetables that you eat. Well, all I can say is if, if, if you cook and you're able to go to a place where you know that it's fresh and maybe even know the farmer that it came from and know what it is that they put into that crop. I'm sure you, once you prepare that meal, you'll be able to taste the difference. And, and, and you know, even going further than that, you know, the kids, you know, everything is just better health-wise to be able to eat fresh and know that, hey, you know, this it's not loaded up with pesticides and all these other different things that can cause harm to your body. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a win-win thing, you know. Can you tell me a little bit more about the steps you take to keep your food free, kind of all of that? You know, I, uh, the only thing that I, that I do use is some fertilizers. But uh, as far as spraying any pesticides, I haven't applied any pesticides probably in about 15 years or so. Um, I just monitor uh, what's going on and let 
a lot of the natural stuff do do what it's gonna do. There is sometimes a little damage, but you know, I'll look and assess whether or not there's enough damage in there because that's the last thing that I want to do. And sometimes I will take a little bit of a loss to keep to keep from applying anything, you know. So uh, to make sure that, that that product is as top shelf as it can be into the consumer. Yeah. Uh, so where can they find your produce right now? It is, I have my own um, produce, uh, produce market uh, in, in Fresno. And I also uh, sell to some produce houses in the Bay Area. Um, uh, one of them is uh, Daylight Foods. Uh, the other one is uh, Bay Cities. Uh, both of those uh, uh, companies have been, you know, uh, purchasing product uh, from me, um, and then also a lot of the uh, local uh, local markets here also are are, uh, you know, are, are sales point. Okay. Hey, so Adriana was saying that you're working on opening up your own store, though. Yes. Yes. Um, it's it's in the process. Of what we're doing just about done um, with the uh, kitchen portion of it that's just being installed and put into there. So we're gonna combine uh, the fresh produce and then also the cooking of some of the things that we grow to. Um, we've got some young young chefs, you know, that uh, that's where they, they lean to using fresh product. So the two things just go together well, you know? So. Um, we're, we're in the process of that and hopefully before the, uh, before, before the beginning of summer, we, uh, we, we hope to be open. Okay. Whoa. So open where though? In, in Fresno in here and here in Fresno. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Nice. What's the name of it? Oh, well, it's, it's, uh, uh, Sherman produce market and then, uh, the inside of it will, uh, I'm going to let those youngsters, uh, uh, let them name their, uh, their kitchen, so to speak, uh, you know, because it, it is kind of exciting. Because, like I said, they're all young, you know, and uh, but they they, they do uh, they do some really really good things, you know, with, with the food, a lot of fresh stuff, healthy healthy cooking, you know, uh, not all fried stuff. So you know, and it's, uh, the whole emphasis is on using in season uh, fresh vegetables and stuff. Nice. And how long have you been thinking about that or developing that project? Uh, like forever, <laughs> but you know, without, without funding and, and trying to do it step by step as you make money and, you know, and a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, trying to build the farm and trying to do that at the same time, man, it's, it's kind of rough, but, but we're, you know, we're almost there. So, um, I've been working on it for the last four or five years, you know, trying to, you know, restore the building and, uh, you know, continue to do what I'm doing now. So, but, uh, you know, the patience is, uh, I think it's getting ready to pay off. So. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like the black farming community and what that looks like and how you participate in it? Yeah. I belong to the uh, African American Farmers uh, Association of California. And, uh, there, there's a, there's a group of farmers, uh, there that, uh, you know, I, I work with, we, um, you know, I actually have a, uh, a farming piece out there. And what we, what we do, you know, with the farmers out there is be able to bring the youth in to be able to train, you know, and uh, show, you know, the different aspects of farming, different types, some of the things that you need to go through. Uh, if, you th if you're thinking about trying to uh, pursue it as a career. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it's not as big of a, of a community as it should be, but uh, that's, that's uh, what we're trying to encourage and trying to get, get more youth involved, you know, with a, you know, a lot, of, a lot of trainings out there on that side. How many watermelons do you have planted here? That, you know, uh, there's, let's see, one, two, three, there's probably five different varieties of watermelons here.
Um, we have the, the seeded variety. Um, you want me to give away trade secrets now? Or? Uh, that's, <laughs> a, that's up to you. That's up to you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we have we have the uh, the seeded variety, which you have to plant along with the uh, seedless watermelons in order to make that happen. Um, so you need both. Um, some people don't know that uh, that if you plant a seedless watermelon without the pollen from a melon that has seeds in it, you're going to end up. Everything's going to have seeds. Right, so, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've got two different varieties of the uh, seeded uh, one, Jubilee. Uh, the other is uh, Crimson Sweet. Uh, and then there's a different mixture of seed, uh, seeded. Uh,